Hello, welcome back. <clears throat> so we're in the middle of the, the first stock round. We have yet to start an operating round and um, we're gonna be going in order from Medici on down. Uh, but first I wanted to address a question that was asked outside of um, YouTube and that was, uh, which companies are the six companies that are usually kicked, meaning that uh, they don't start? And um, you actually saw quite a few of them. I, let me start with the worst company in the game. And that is OU, this one. Um, it's trash. And it's not to say that you can't do something with it, because you can. It's just that it's easier to do something with every other company in the game for the same amount of effort. So why is it trash? Two reasons. Number one, it has no port. Uh, at least MIDI has a port, because MIDI's also semi-trash, but, but it, it has a port and can go to America, so that's good. OU has no port. It has Paris as its metropolis, and Paris stinks. Um, and it stinks from the perspective that even at Brown, it looks like this. So you can't go through Paris. Well, you can, but you can see it does these little crazy loops. And in green, it's all dead ends. So it's really hard to get a nice route going, right? Because you, um, you have a dead end in Paris. And then the other thing you get to do is you could go up to London here, but you have to go across this ferry that has a minus one. And you can't put a token here, you can't put a token there. So in order to go across the ferry for a minus one, you have to buy one of those North Seas tokens. And uh, they're called Port Authorities. One of these. So you would use one of the two points on this to, uh, to go across that ferry to hit London. Um, that's a lot of effort just to make money. Uh, whereas other people can just hit London without doing any of that nonsense. So um, that's the reason why OU is very difficult. Now, some people still pick OU because OU is a fantastic one to become a national. Um, it's not to say that it it's, you know, absolutely awful. It's just that compared to the other ones, uh, it is usually the, the top one that doesn't make the cut. And, and if you have some kind of weird game strategy where you're trying to make OU work, I guarantee you, uh, at least with my group of friends, that you could wait until the very final round of the game to take OU, and you don't have to have any concerns or worry that someone else is going to take it before you. <laughs> so it's a good fantasy football last-minute draft thing. Um... Okay, the next one would be the Irish company, GSWR, which is actually taken in this game. Uh, it is an awful starting location in Ireland there. Um, but the one time it does get taken is in this exact scenario, where somebody owns both of the Great Britain, and they're heavily invested in Great Britain, and they want to keep investing. So GSWR is a situational type of company. Now, one thing GSWR has is it has a very nice port that goes to America. Um, and the America thing is good. I mean, America is the top paying spot in the game. It pays more than anything else at the end of the game. So being able to connect to America is not always a bad thing. Um, number three that's usually gone is BJV, which in this case is. And I think in our last scenario also is BJV is where the M company is. See where that M company started? That's where BJV would start. It is a uh, national, or not a national, but it's a regional company that nobody started. And it can be good. It's just that DSJ is that much better. But um, BJV, its primary goal at the start of the game is to get a token somewhere else in uh, Norway. Usually um, when green spots are available, They'll just upgrade. Um, uh, they'll just upgrade uh, Copenhagen there. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll upgrade here and then uh, yeah, Copenhagen, and um, and then get um, get a token there. But the other thing they can do is they can do a mad rush to get a token up there, or they'll use their port and pay a little bit of extra money and get a token over here. Um, the the first priority is BJV is to stop using this spot. Um, but they can do it, and once they do it, it's, it's you know, they're just as good as DJV. Um, uh, BJV, or I'm sorry, they're just as good as DSJ. 
Now, BJV is the perfect candidate for a government. So if you have DSJ, um, it is very viable to take BJV as your second company and use BJV as a future government. And, um, and I've seen one player, in fact, use BJV as a crap company. And what I mean by that is uh, they, would, they would put money into BJV and then buy a new three train or whatever, and then they would just sell it for $1 to DSJ. So that way DSJ became super duper powerful and had all these trains and BJV was just sitting there giving them free trains. Now you might be wondering, well, why do that? Well, then BJV just becomes a government when the trains melt and then he gets a whole bunch of trains for free and then he can just plow through those mountains at the top of, of uh, Norway there. I mean, there is a strategy. It's just that you have to, first of all, have DSJ and, and that's the reason why BJV uh, misses the cut. And it would be nice maybe if I uh, picked, um, I can create some kind of Viking AI that, that you know, his, his primary focus is, is to, you know, make Norway great again. Um, <clears throat> okay, the third, the fourth one is Lizard over here in Russia. Nobody likes Lizard. Um, Lizard starts in a crappy place and it starts very far away from anything that's worth money. Um, so a lot of people avoid Lizard. Uh, WW is usually much more popular. Uh, and then the last one is Pob over in Germany. It depends on the players. Uh, some players really like Pob. Most players don't. Uh, beyond that, uh, sometimes you'll see some of these Austrian-Hungary companies. SB usually starts, but Mav won't. Like in this game, Mav didn't. Sometimes you'll see an Italy company missing. And sometimes you'll see MZA down here in, in uh, Spain not make the cut. Um, and then MIDI. MIDI won't make the cut most of the time. Um, so I'm sorry I was sidetracking, but I thought maybe some of you would be interested in that. So let's get on with the game. Um, Medici's first. Medici's buying a share. I've already allocated the money for him to buy all the shares he needs, uh, but one of these two shares has been purchased. And I'm, the reason why I gave the money ahead of time, nobody else has any money, so there's nobody competing with him for buying shares. It's just a matter of turn order. So with this turn, he bought one of these two. Okay, he still has another one to buy there, and then he has two more to buy here. Okay, um, next is Tchaikovsky. He's the Russian company, and he's going to go major with... Um, MS, Ugh. yeah, he's gonna go major with MSP. So I'm gonna move the camera over here because this is where most of the action is going to be. So MSP is the very first company, just a little bit off the camera here. He's gonna go major. So what that means is he has a $60 share and it's gonna go to 75. And then this is gonna show up on the 75 track up there. Since he doesn't have a train, he's gonna go backwards on that first operating round, and if he makes his number, he'll go back to where he was. So you might be thinking, well, why, why go major? Um, the reason to go major on this very first operating round is not because of the stock value, but uh, because you then you get to lay tracks. He gets six track points instead of three. And you're gonna find the Russian company is gonna do that with, a Russian player is gonna do that with most of his companies. <clears throat> okay, so next is GWR. Now, GWR has a similar weird situation like that. Um, if green gets unlocked in these first two operating rounds, he would like to be a major, so he doesn't necessarily need the six track points. But it would be handy. Um, by going major, you're also um, reducing the amount of money you're going to make. So GWR is going to stay as a regional um, because he wants to make some more money. Uh, the thing is, is uh, he does want to go major probably for the next round, but not this one. Okay, next is... Oh, I'm sorry. I was going down the path here. I need to come back. Uh, so, um, so does... Wellington want to do anything with any of his? 
that's the million dollar question. And I'm gonna say for right now, no. Uh, Wellington is in an auto pass. Okay, so now we go to De Gaulle. Uh, does he wanna go major with any of his companies? And that's also a tricky question. And I'm gonna say no, he does not. So he's auto pass. Now we go to Trump. Does Trump want to go major with any of his companies? And he might. Um, hmm. I'm just looking at the situation here. His MZA company is the only one that's really low on the... Sorry, I'm taking so long. Uh, this is actually a very difficult decision. I mean, even if I were playing in real, against real people, I would have a hard time with this decision. So here's what's going through my head. Um, the six track points are attractive. And the reason they're attractive is Spain is pretty big. And RCP here needs to lay a lot of track points just to get to Madrid, and also needs to lay a lot of track points to get to this $20 whistle stop down here, which is also a very lucrative route. Um, MZA uh, has quite a few track points to get up to Madrid. Um, so they all have a lot of track points, but the thing is, is MZA's got automatic routes. It doesn't need to lay track points to get money. RCP does. So RCP may wanna go major, the problem with RCP is it's a premium company that needs to make uh, $90, or sorry, $120, or it won't make its number. And that's really a tall order. Um, the MZA company, however, is a $60 a share company. So he could, and that's what he's going to do. He's gonna go major with MZA and leave the other ones be. So MZA is gonna go major. And, and the reason for this is uh, he needs, MZA to grow as quickly as possible. And MZA is gonna go major and it's gonna end up right over here underneath MSP, like so. Um, he could have waited. And that's the reason why I just was going back and forth. And, and uh, yeah, anyways, uh, well, enough of that. We'll move on to, well, actually, he's gonna make less money with MZA you know what? He's gonna he's gonna leave it be. MZA is gonna stay right where it's at. So auto pass for Trump, and then it gets to us. Now, I'm going to tell you I always like going major right away. I'm not a fan of of uh, holding out, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go major with SB first. So SB is at 65. It's gonna go to 80, and so it's gonna show up at 80 dollars on the stock track. So SB went major. Now, one of the other things about going major is, as you may notice, the shares are at 25%. Um, actually, this one was, so 25% each. And then, and then you can see these other ones are white. And then all you do is just take the whole stack and flip it over, and now they're all 10% shares. So um, I know that our 22 president share is at 50%, and then it flips over to uh, 20%. Now, you'll see me not do this the entire game because I'm, I'm smart enough to know that if I'm, if I'm on that top track, it's a 10-share company. If I'm on the bottom track, it's a 4-share company. Um, so I don't bother with, the, you know, with actually changing it, but I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that that's, that's what's happening when you go major. Um, so by going major, I'm going to get less profit from running my trains. Uh, because I now only own 20% of the company instead of 50%. However, my company is going to get more of the profit, and that will allow it to grow quicker. And so there's that trade-off. And uh, um, it's a very nuanced thing. And um, uh, from my perspective, I'm focused on getting green three trains, and I don't want to steal a train from one company 
to benefit another. So some people can do that because they basically, um, you know, scrap a company and ruin it um, in order to get another company to be strong. I don't do that. I want all my companies to be strong. And so uh, I do it this way and that makes them strong. So now uh, me earning money for myself is slow. And so this is where the trade-off comes. And I could still theoretically lose the game doing this. Um, okay, with that being said, um, we go back to Medici. So Medici's buying another share. So he bought his second SFR share. And then we're gonna keep going. Troikovsky is going to go major with Lizard. And so Lizard's gonna go up and uh, we're basically gonna have Tchaikovsky going for four turns in a row uh, up there. Um, it's gonna be pretty bad. Uh, so auto pass for Wellington, auto pass for De Gaulle, um, auto pass for Trump, and then we get to us and we don't have to go major with DSJ yet. Uh, so I am going to wait with DSJ, but I'm going to go major with, ooh, see BHB is a premium company. So I want to go major with BHB. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say no. We're actually going to pass ourselves. And this is contrary to how I usually play, by the way. I usually go major with everything. But I'm not going to do that this time. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, I might regret it. And, and here's why I regret it. Um, so let's say BHB, for example. I'm going to get three track points. That's not a problem because Berlin's pretty close. Berlin costs two track points to lay. But if I ever... If we ever get to the green phase, which can happen, uh, if somebody does well enough and buys a green train, that automatically unlocks the green phase. And if that happens, then it costs four track points and they can upgrade Berlin. And uh, that's magical. Uh, and in fact, now that I've explained that to you, I'm actually gonna do it. <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I, I gotta get it done. I'm gonna put BHB up on the board, way up on the top. So let me move this forward so you can see. BHB has to make $120 a share or it doesn't move up. So um, that could be a problem. So I'm taking a gamble that somebody's gonna buy a green train before it's his turn. And uh, that may not happen. So we'll see. Okay, so Medici is going to buy the first share of SFAI. And then we get to Tchaikovsky. And he's going to go major with WW. And WW will go up. And then auto pass, auto pass, auto pass. And then it's back to us. And I think we are now passing for real this time. I am going to leave DSJ alone. Um, okay, so uh, it's back to Troikovsky. He's going to go, he's basically going major with all four of his companies. So we just got to find MKB somewhere in here. And, and yes, uh, Medici would have bought all of his shares of SFAI. So here's what's happened so far, is Medici now has all four shares of SFR. Remember, they're 25% each. Medici has all of them. Medici also has all four shares of SFA SFAI. So um, he is 100% ownership. His company, SFAI, is gonna get this $120 cause it was a $60 a share company. And then this company is gonna get 180 because it was a $90 share company and that's the SFR. So lots of money is already in the company. And I'm gonna swing it back over here and you can see that there's zero shares of this available and of this. So 
he, uh, Medici's bought everything out. Everybody else is on auto pass, by the way. Um, uh, we're all out of money, and we've all gone major with everything we're going to go major with. So um, I think Trump did go major with one of them. No, he did not. Okay, so uh, actually Trump is going to go major with RCP. So we're going to take RCP up to major and... Trump is going to be up on the major scale with that. Okay, so um, that's done. And now, um, Medici still has 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars. Okay, so uh, he knows that GWR is going to do great. So he's going to spend 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars. I'm sorry, or is it $90? It's $90. He's spending $90 and buying a share of GWR. Now, uh, in the very first stock round, there's a special rule in the game where a player can say, nope, I'm blocking you from buying that company. And that's exactly what um, Wellington did. So here's the problem with that. So now he's just going to take his $90 and buy a share of lawnmower instead. Um, and, G and Wellington can't block all of his companies. He can only block one from being purchased by another player. So a share of lawnmower at 25%, not 10%, is already owned by Medici. And uh, Medici now um, has a whole bunch of ownership. And, and so uh, Wellington has 50% ownership and Medici is already at 25% ownership, and uh, there's only one share of lawnmower left for uh, Wellington to buy, and of course he can't afford it. So uh, that's how Medici is punishing others for, for uh, well, for uh, investing too much and uh, not having enough to buy their own shares. So um, Wellington could go major with lawnmower, which will make the shares uh, only worth 10%, and that means Medici would not make as much money. And that is an option for Wellington, and it's not a bad option. And in fact, uh, <clears throat> well, should he or shouldn't he? I mean, it's always, always the tough question. Uh, he's going to. Because of what Medici did, he's now gonna go major with lawnmower. And, and his logic being that lawnmower is not going to make enough money. Uh, well, it could. I mean, it just got $90. Yeah, so he's going to move lawnmower up. So now lawnmower is also at the top. And lawnmower is over here. And it's already worth, now it's worth $120 a share. And Medici says, thank you very much. I just made $30 for doing nothing. So, uh... That's how it is, and that's how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down. And I, some folks might be asking, why did you do that? Well, some of it is simply, it's gonna reduce the amount of money Medici makes from operating the company. The company is gonna make more money now. And then lastly, uh, it's banking on the same reason why I went major with BHB. If somebody buys a three train, then lawnmower can be the one that upgrades London. Because uh, London costs four track points. And if you don't have a major, you're not going to have four track points to upgrade it. So that's the idea. Um, doesn't always work. But uh, since Medici bought that share, he figured that was enough to push him over the edge. So we'll see how good of a strategy that is or not. So uh, here's my plan. I have a mess here. Shares are going to pile up, and as the game goes on, this is going to get ugly. But also, as the game goes on, these miners are going to merge and go away. So I'm going to be able to shift all those companies down, and then there will be room up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take one of these tokens, right, and I'm going to put all the shares that that guy owns up there. So whenever a company runs, I can just see... Oh, you have two shares, you have one share, you have one share, and then just pay every 
company accordingly. So only the money is going to be down here. But for now, it is going to be a mess until this stuff clears out. Okay. Um, so uh, that was a 25 minute uh, talk. So my apologies there. Uh, let's finally get this game on the go. So uh, we go to the operating round. So we move to operating round one. Uh, my budget does not allow me to have a model that walks around with round one uh, sign above her head. So you'll have to just make do with your imagination. And um, first thing we have to do is the C company is going to decide if he's going first or last. And he is going to go... first. So, uh, or he could have just gone wherever he was, but he's going to go first. So I'm going to go ahead and move that down and let's go check out the C company. That's, that's De Gaulle, by the way. He's right up there in France. And, uh, the reason he wanted to go first is he doesn't want to get blocked. But the thing is, is De Gaulle owns almost all of this. So it's not that big of a deal, but he's going to lay track for one. And then two, and then he's even going to actually help his company and do three, like so. Okay, um, that's all he can do, and then he's going to spend a hundred bucks from the C company to buy a train, which is happening right now. All right, so I'm going to grab a big stack of trains. And I'm just going to take one, give it to the C company, and now we move to GWR. Okay, GWR is right there. And GWR, it starts the game with a, like this city is not very good. Uh, but it can do that for one. And there's a double whistle stop here for two, and that costs two track points. So he has to actually stop. And so what he's actually gonna do is instead of this, he'll do this for three. So that way he's spending three track points. So that's also a metropolis. So uh, that was three track points there. And then, uh, we're going to swing over here, and you can see we're going to give him, and he does not have a hundred, oh yeah, he does, right there, a hundred dollars, and, uh, and I think it was very fitting that the uh, chime from Big Ben is going off just as uh, GWR finishes its first operating round. Well done. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to do is we gotta pay our weenies. So the privates pay. So let's start with us. Uh, here you can see I'm making 25, 35, 40 bucks. So I'm gonna put down these trains, grab 40 bucks, and that goes in our money. And as you may have saw, we had zero dollars. So now we have $40 to our name. And Mr. Trump's gonna definitely get some money, uh, 20, 35 dollars so he gets money uh, De Gaulle gets nothing here uh, fifteen dollars for for mr mr Wellington and then uh, here uh, no money and uh, there is gonna be money for Medici he's gonna get five ten twenty he gets twenty dollars. So well done for him. Okay, so um, back to the game. Uh, GDBR is done. Now we go to Plum. I'm gonna go ahead and just move Plum down as we do them. So Plum is sitting right here. And usually there's some negotiation between this owner and this owner, and they're gonna agree that they're gonna link up this way, etc., etc. And so he wants to avoid the mountains. So he's going to go one, 
and then two, and then work his way towards Paris for three. Um, and then he's done. So now Plum, I thought Plum was a major, but I guess he's not. Um, so Plum's gonna get a two train for $100. So he's done. And next up is SFR. SFR is in Italy, Rome in fact. So we're going to do that for one. And Medici was never a nice person. So he's going to do two. And watch this nonsense. Three and just cut J right off the track. And uh, you would think that he was Trump, huh? <laughs> but Medici and Trump are just both shaking each other's hands right now. So, um, so yes, SFR just uh, got a little got a little grindy with him. All right, SFR is gonna buy a two train for one hundred dollars. Okay, SFR is done. Next up is L. The L company is owned by Mr. Wellington, and it's way up there. And uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is that he needs to pay a track fee. Or not a track fee, but there's a hill here for 30 bucks. So he'll put that in, and that's gonna cost him $30, so let's just remember that. And then we're going to do I'm gonna just make sure we hit a whistle stop along the way. Remember, uh, some games that are 18xx, whistle stops are evil. In this game, whistle stops are your friend. You can, you can skip whistle stops. If there's more whistle stops than you need, it's no harm, no foul in this game. So you wanna hit whistle stops. So you're gonna see, he wants to go to London, but he's gonna zigzag around to hit those whistle stops. And that's normal for this game. It's not normal for other 18xx games. So. Um, that's something to very much be aware of whenever you play. Uh, always understand how whistle stops uh, work. Okay, so we're paying the $100 uh, for the train. And then we need to pay $30. So L happens to have $30 right there. So <coughs> it's got 10 bucks left. So well done, because otherwise Wellington didn't have the money. Uh, okay, next, SFAI, so Medici's up again, <coughs> SFAI's right there, uh, this is a Y city, so there's one, two, and along a similar line, since whistle stops don't hurt, he's going to make sure he includes as many as he can as he's zigzagging down. So there's three. And then SFAI will pay $100. And I'm just doing that off camera. And SFAI just got a nice two train. All right, next is the A company, also Mr. Medici. The A company is right here. So um, he's going to get his Y city in. So he could do that for the port. Um, but what's interesting in his case is I think he actually, uh, some people put regular cities in with the Y cities. Bear with me here. Some people put a lot. 
So whoever I played with last time didn't do a good job of helping me put this away. Uh, okay. I may not have gotten them all. In fact, there was another one. I just found another two. I just found... Oh, there's a third one. Jesus. Fourth. Five, six, seven. These are important because the Y cities are worth 30 bucks, but the non Y cities are worth 20. And so if you, if you grab the wrong one, it's going to lead to your doom because you don't want to be collecting 20 bucks for a route when you should be collecting 30. And it's not to say that you can't catch it, it's just that if you're not paying attention, I mean, you really could miss it. Um, this is ridiculous. There's so many of the wrong tiles in here. Okay, I am going to stop now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going this way because I want to help uh, Italy. Now, this port doesn't exist. And that's fine. A is not going to use the port anyways. Plum's the one that wants to use the port. But when we unlock the green track, this green will upgrade and there'll be a path to the port. So it's it's really no big deal at all. And it just makes the new player panic and that's it. All right, so one, two, and then three. So he's trying to go down and connect with Italy. So he can do a route that way. All right, so the A company is going to buy a train. Hey, we'll call them the Fonz. That's the Fonz company. All right, now after A is E. Okay, who owns E? E is owned by Tchaikovsky. So E is this company over here that's down in Russia. Now this E company might be in a little bit of a pickle because Tchaikovsky has no money. So let's see what E can do. This costs $30. However, uh, the Russian track rights is 20% discount and the E company is another one third. So the game will say that when you have two of them like that, just call it 50% and call it a day. So it's a $15 track play. So I'm looking over at the e-company, and the e-company has $110. So I don't have the extra five bucks. And if Tchaikovsky would have had just $5, he could have helped out, but he doesn't. So e-company cannot lay any track. That is extremely unfortunate. That actually hurts. So E Company is gonna buy a train, and that's all he can do is buy a train. And he has $10 to his name. All right, GSWR is next. GSWR is over here. Okay, GSWR is A regular city and one of the things to always remember is see this this uh, ferry path touches the circle so that means that you have to have a track going this way that track is already formed and you're not allowed to break it now he could have gone you know any other direction outside of that but he had to no matter what go that way and so he'll do that for one and he's at least connected to, you know, Liverpool for two. Uh, but he actually gets to lay more track. It's just, where's he going to go? And uh, one of the things he can at least do is add a whistle stop to the route. So when he does run his train, he'll at least get to add a whistle stop to the route. So one, two, three, like so. And we'll buy a train.
Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and just do something that might speed up the game for me. I'm just going to sell trains to everybody. So like WW and then take $100. MZA, take $100. So we're just gonna give everybody their train. Just understand that when their turn comes, they don't actually have the train. The train is something they can't buy until the very end of their turn. But I'm just getting it done, if that's okay with everybody. I think I even did this on my other series. And it does speed up the game. So I'm just gonna take care of it all now. And I just strangely tried to give a two train to a company that already had one and was wondering why I had no money. <laughs> uh, goober. All right, so that's that's a hundred dollars right there. 50, 60, 70. Yep, that's a hundred. And hundred. Hundred. Um, now, one of the reasons I can do this is because uh, the game rules say that the two trains are basically reserved for every company. It's impossible for a company to buy two two trains. Um, it's impossible for them to sell them, you know, so one company has one and one doesn't. Everybody gets a two train, and uh, there is no exception. Uh, to this game so uh, uh, there's exactly 30 companies and there's exactly 32 trains now after this it's uh, anything goes so uh, when the green trains are come up if you can afford to buy three of them you can buy three and there's no one that's gonna stop you and if and if uh, there's a company that wasn't able to buy a three train well that's tough diddly um, but that's not the case with these two trains and that's why you see me, you know, getting away with what I'm doing. Uh, everybody gets one. It's a, not a, it's a friendlier 18xx game in that kind of regard. Uh, usually every game has enough of the basic train that nobody's getting hosed like this, but okay. So we're done with GSWR. And now we're gonna move to Chin and you'll see DSJ and then G. So we're gonna do Chin and Chin is here. All right, so Chin has that same situation. And um, you have to preserve that. And in order for him to make good money, uh, we're gonna need the port. Although we do have a port here. So there's actually a public port. So this is the port for the OE run. So, uh, actually, that changes things a little. So here you go, for one, two, three. And we're just starting to move towards Madrid. Um, Chin has a tricky spot that to get to Madrid, you're either going through a crappy city or a crappy mountain. And uh, uh, you, you can't get around it. I mean, it's you can go all the way up here for the cheapest, or actually that's the cheapest path through. But uh, in order to get to Madrid, you're going through something and they all stink. So uh, the, um, the, the good thing about Chin though, is that this port here is great for OE runs. So um, anyways, Chin's done. Now we go to DSJ. DSJ already has a route without even laying a single track. So that's the beauty of DSJ. His early game is very powerful. So he's just gonna go one, two, and three. And of course, if he wants to get all the way through, he has to pay $45 or go through a crappy city. Um, G is next. G is over here.
So G's goal is just to connect with us something else. He wants to connect with Moscow, he wants to connect with MKV. So the first thing he's gonna to try to do is connect with MKV. So one and then two. And obviously that's gonna be expensive, so he's not gonna do that now. And then he'll just come out the top of Kharkov for three, like so. But he gets to lay two more track points. So there's two more. Um, I'm thinking that maybe that's not what I want to do. So we're going to go one. Three, like so. Always about getting those whistle stops in. Okay. G is done. Now we go to Bell. Bell, as you can see, already has track on him. So then it's just a matter of what does Bell want to do. And Bell wants to... That Nancy City would pay him something, but it's only 20 bucks. So for now, Bell is going to go one, two, and I think we're going to do a straight through. And even when I'm playing with my friends, uh, we're always generous, meaning Paris lays a certain way. And if somebody lays Paris one way or another, we let people go back and change this to connect. Um, you can be a dork and, and be anal and say that the rules are the rules. You're welcome to it. It's just that there's a reason why friends come back to my house and maybe not yours. So that's the way you want to, you just need to understand it. <laughs> the way you keep friends is you don't pick over stupid stuff. And, and, um, and yes, you could be the kind of person that lays Paris in some weird way that makes nobody connect with it. And so they'll have to spend another two track points to get connected. You know, you're welcome to it. It's just, that's not the game. You're not gonna win the game because of that decision. It's just, it's just not worth it. And so um, anyways, I'm, I know I was getting on a pedestal there, but that's, that's it in a nutshell. All right, uh, moving on. Bell is done, and now we have Midi next. And so Midi is right near Bell. It's this company. So Midi has an interesting thing. The city, you can see there, already makes 10 bucks. Uh, that's not anything to write home about, but um, we're going to go this way. And it has a port here, so it doesn't matter where, which way this is oriented, the port is outside of that. Um, so he already has a port to go somewhere. Uh, it would be nice if there was a Spanish city or something to make money off of, but there isn't. Um, so he's going to just head up and try to link up with with Paris. So we're going to go one, and I think... I think it's going to have to look like this for two. I really think, I don't think he's going to connect the way he wants to connect. And you're allowed to get out the tile and look at it, and here's what it's likely going to, to look like. Or it could look like this. Um, that's the way it's going to look like. So, with that being said, We're going to do this and then we'll just flip that over for now just to show nobody's actually laid it there okay so midi's done and now b is up b is another Tchaikovsky one and it's the one all the way up in norway all right so b So 
who's gonna do that, he makes 30 bucks. Uh, no complaints there, really. 30 bucks is nice. So B gets the 30 bucks, and then he's going to go around the city. And then um, MZA is next. MZA right there. MZA needs the port. So must connect to the port or otherwise he's getting himself in trouble. The other thing MZA has a tough choice of is do you take the whistle stop right away or do you try to go here right away? Um, if you do, the whistle stop is way, way down the road. Um, that's the part where MZA has a tough start. So, um, uh, no matter what, either way, like, like if he does this, then he needs to wait until green before he can start going to Madrid. If he goes this way, obviously he can lay track. Um, hmm. yeah, tough choices. I think he's going to do this for one, and then we'll get two, three. That was one of the reasons why maybe going major with him would have been nice. But it's okay. Uh, this money is also nice, but for now we're gonna bypass it. It'll be worth more later. And uh, unless De Gaulle really wants to try to take it, uh, Trump has everything locked down. So he has a monopoly on this. Okay, D is next. That is us. We're finally getting to go. And we have all kinds of magical things we get to do. Um, so we are on a Y city with a whole bunch of whistle stops. So we're going to do that for sure. And then we're going to put this, which is a plus 20 revenue, right on top. So that means he's gonna make 50 bucks off of that spot instead of just uh, 30. And we're gonna get connected up, uh, bing, and but, uh, boom. There's three right there. Okay, J is next. And J is a little upset because he's been blocked. But he gets 60 bucks, so he's not crying that much. Uh, 60 bucks is an amazing amount of money uh, to start off with. And J, by the way, his special ability is a 10% discount. On trains and so when I went and did all that mass hundred dollar thing I forgot about that so I'm gonna give him 70 bucks because he paid a hundred and he was only supposed to pay 90 so he's gonna get 70 uh, that means Jay actually has $80 right now and uh, the other thing I forgot to do is when I paid the weenies K company gets $20 because it's a mail company and uh, I'll explain those real quick here so Jay's ability is a 10% discount on trains. So I took 100 from here and I was only supposed to take 90. And then this one has a little chart. Uh, the company just makes money on its own and it collects it during the uh, weenie phase. So, so uh, the 20 bucks was supposed to be there. Um, okay, so back to Jay again. Uh, Jay was blocked, if you remember. But Jay's not too concerned. Um, this game is pretty cool in that regard. So he'll lay his track like he needs to, and he's going to make sure that he's touching the port, because that's crucial. And if you can see, he has the port here, and I'm just going to lift the camera up a little bit. There's a red zone right here in the same sea, so his two train is easily going to, to do this. And then he 
actually can come across the ferry if he needs to. Um, well, actually, no. That's all he can do. There won't be any whistle stops, but he'll at least have a two train. Um, the next thing he wants to do is lay Naples here, which would be over a C zone, but he can lay that for two track points. So um, I usually have everything memorized, but this is one I always look up. Um, you can see when you're laying a token by C, it's $40 times the C zone, but if you're laying a track by C, it's $10 times the C zone. So, and it's $5 over a ferry. So he's gonna lay a track and he has to pay uh, $10, basically. So it's two points to lay Naples. So Naples will go here. And then for that, he got 60 bucks, right? From all that uh, wonderfulness. So he'll spend 10 of it to, to lay Naples. And um, that's gonna go to the bank. And then he'll spend 40 more plus the uh, 20. So he's spending 70 bucks is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, so here's, here's where it was. $10 to lay this. It's $20 to lay this. And that's for, uh, so see how here it says 20 bucks. Uh, that's $20 to lay this. And then because he's going over a C zone per the chart, that's $40 times a C zone. So that's 40 more. So that's where we get 70 bucks. So J is now in Naples. And that's all legal uh, because J never left Italy. So, um, so anyways, that works out just fine. Yes, he spent 70 bucks, but he got 60 for, for starting here. And to be quite honest, that was quite a way to get into Naples. I mean, had he started here, he would have to pay to go through a mountain. I mean, I know that's only 30 bucks, but still, um, it's not that simple. Uh, well, actually it is, but anyways, um, it is what it is. Let's move on. Uh, Jay spent some money, uh, but he's fine. He made money too. K is next, and that's here. So Trump does have the problem of being, so that's, that's $30, and I'm going to check real quick. Um, he does get a 20% discount because of the track rights, so that means he only has to pay $24. So I'm going to go to K, and I'm taking $30 away from K, and I'll give him six bucks back. Okay, so there's one. Two. And the cardinal rule is always lay the double whistle stops first if you can. Uh, three. Because you may not have the one you need later when everybody else lays them. So uh, there you go. There's three for K. Now we go to F. That's us. Uh, that's right. We started on kibbles and bits here. So F is right here. So we're going to lay this for one. And then we are going to do the double whistle stops for two. And we got to get up to Berlin for three. I don't think I can do Salzburg. See, Salzburg's on this side, so I can't do that one. So we got to get to Berlin or we won't be able to make any money. So that's three. M is up. And M, where are you, M? What did I do with M? Let me look at M over here. It says they're in Norway. Oh, they're all the way up there. Okay, so M is going to play exactly the way BJB would play. So M can do that for one, two, 
and three. Okay, M is done, H is up, and H is over here in uh, Portugal. So he is gonna help RCP to lay some of that track. So, one, Two, three, like so. Okay, um, that ends the regional phase. So now we go to the majors. The majors being all the way at the top. Now we know nobody has a train, so nobody's making any money. So all of them are moving backwards. Doesn't matter what they do. They're all moving backwards, but let's go in order here. BHB, RCP, and then lawnmower, okay? They all get six track points. So BHB first. This is us, by the way. So I'm gonna do one. Two, three, and let's get Berlin in. I do not want to do that, so I want to do that. So I'm going to change it around. I'm going to do one, two, one, two, three, four, five. That's six track points right there. To lay all that. Now, um, if you're wondering, I just don't want to hit this city. I want to be able to go into Berlin without going through that city. So that's why I oriented it the way I did. And I want to make room for F, because F is also on my team. So I don't want to screw F. If I did want to screw F, I would have just come straight down and came in that way. So, no need to do that. Um, I do need to find some whistle stops though, uh, but you can see that there's a nice double whistle stop I'll be able to connect to next round. So I'll be able to get with double whistle stops and uh, go to Berlin. So that's a very good, a very, very good uh, situation. And I am gonna spend uh, 20 bucks. I'm gonna give myself $5 in change and you might be asking why. Uh, there's a $20 token here, and I'm gonna take that token, and I'm taking Berlin right now. I'm not letting anybody else come in. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, that, that's impossible. Nobody can even go in Berlin. And you're right, but I'm taking it anyways while I have the money. So, um, uh, one strategy is, is maybe wait until you get your three train because you do need to save money to get to the three train. Uh, but I'm gonna spend the 20 bucks. Uh, and if I'm 20 bucks short on a three train later, you can laugh at me. And so, ha ha. Um, okay, so next is RCP. RCP is over here, and this is the Trump company. So we're going to continue with one, and then get a double whistle stop. I can't find any straight double whistle stops. Two, and this is a $45 purchase. Uh, I think Spain does get a 20%. Let me make sure. Where are you, RCP? Yes. So 20% discount is $9 off, so it's 36 bucks. I'm assuming Trump can afford it, so let's find out. Uh, that's RCP. Yeah, he can afford it. 10, 20, 30. There's 40 bucks right there. And $4 back to RCP. Okay, so RCP is done. BHP is done. And the last one was lawnmower. 
Okay, so the lawnmower is there. Let me take the double whistle stop for one. And then two. And I just need to, this would be three, four, if I can afford to do it. Five. Six. Okay. So he was able to spend six and get all of that in, which was very well done. Next is SB, that's us. All right, so we, this is a two. And I have to pick where I'm going to be. And that's an interesting dilemma, but I will pick this one. And I'm actually going to uh, rethink this because I may want it to be like that. Yes, I do. So what I'm gonna do is just change this one. This is part of that forgiveness thing I was telling you about. And some of it is just to speed up the game. I mean, if you make everybody say, that's my final answer, and then you hold them to it, I mean, then it just slows down the game so much. So he's gonna just come up and connect here, and then he's gonna come out and go there. So two, Three, four, and five. All right, so here's the drawback, is SB is not going to get any whistle stops. Um... If SB chose to be here, he would get whistle stops. So that's the, the dilemma with all of this. But I think for now, that's the way it's going to be, and we're going to just live with it. Um, the whistle stops would be nice. Uh, it'd be nice if this can connect. And in fact, F could try to just connect this way and not worry about Berlin right now. Um, and in doing so would allow uh, SB to get the double whistle stops here, and F would still at least get two Y cities, which is a very good run. Um, upon further review, I'm actually going to do that. And uh, once again, this is just one of those. I'm just going to change our mind, and that's fine. Okay, so SB's. Oh, that was two, three, four, five. He actually gets to lay one more track for six. See, and then that's what's going to help, because when F takes his turn, he'll lay this track, because it's half and half, and then he'll be able to do a run. So nobody gets hurt. And uh, SB is going to be able to get two whistle stops in his run, which he very much needs in order to hit his number. Okay, next is MSP. And MSP is St. Petersburg, so we need to do this goofy thing. Now, my friend that's coming over this weekend calls it Moscow all the time, and no matter how many times we correct him, he gets it wrong. So uh, if I uh, record us playing a multiplayer version of this, which I'm planning on doing, um, you know, just make sure you chuckle when you hear him do it. <laughs> uh, okay, so... I'm gonna do that. For two... Three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that's MSP. Next is Lizard. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, Lizard, WW, and then MKV. So this is the rush hour. So, um, so uh, there's Lizard there. Oh, what to do, what to do. I think we'll do one, two, three, four, or sorry, three. Four, five, six. Okay, so the part that gets tricky here is you're going to notice that um, things aren't going to be able to connect fully until we get to green track. Uh, so that's fine, it's just you know, you have to be mindful of that. Um, okay, next is WW and then MKV. So WW is over here, and he's got the dilemma, right? He can't connect to Berlin, which he desperately wants to do, um, but he just can't. So, uh, we're going to start off with one, two, three, four, and then let's see if he can afford this. He has $10. He cannot. Well, actually, because there's forced train purchase on the first turn. So he has $10 and Tchaikovsky has $0. So he can't do it. So one, oh, oh, he is in trouble. Yes, the grandfather clock agrees. So there's four. Okay, now here's, here's where my mind went, right? I can't afford to do this. Uh, he needs to make revenue. <laughs> and right now he's, he's, he's uh, squeezed in because of the border. So he's gonna connect to Brett Lipskoss, Livats, blah, 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 however you pronounce it, there. Um, he'll get the money for connecting to it but more importantly, he's at least gonna get a route, right? So, so one, two, three, four, five, and then six, he'll at least get connected to there so he can make some bling. Now, I may actually move him up here to Libavo because uh, I have the track points and it's worth more. So I can collect more money. Um, and by collecting that money, that'll allow him to finally go through here but he'll need more turns before you can connect anything substantial. And then last, uh, but not least, least is my MKV. Now MKV is wedged in because of this water. Uh, this is a $45 water here. Um, actually, if I was smart, I would have realized that this is a $30 water, so I would at least have done that instead. Uh, but MKV's got to figure out how to connect to things as well. So for now, this is one, two, three. Hmm. All right, so what I'm looking at 
is what's the cheapest way to get through this. You can see here it's 45, 45, and 30. If I came around this way, it's 45, 45, and 30. So it's the same no matter what. So that's fine. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. So. Oh, hold on. We're gonna do that. If E can come up with the money to lay this track, that would be one, two, three, and then he'd be able to get through. I don't think E is gonna have the money, and that's gonna be unfortunate, but um, that's how the cookie crumbles when Tchaikovsky doesn't let himself get the money. And Tchaikovsky's not gonna be able to use personal money anymore, because uh, the only reason you get to do that is because you, have, you can do an emergency train purchase. E has a train. So there is no emergency anymore. So E has to be the one with the money. And uh, uh, this game does allow you to just run and hit one city so he'll make 30 bucks and that's it. That is an awful run, by the way. <laughs> uh, very awful. I mean, usually you're making you know, $40 and, and being sad. I mean, he's gonna make 30 and be sad. Um, okay, that ends operating round one. We're moving to operating round two. I'm gonna go get a coffee and obviously end this because I don't like to go that much beyond an hour. So thank you for watching, stay awesome, and I'll see you in a few minutes.